When we're underway and I walk around the ship, one of the questions I get asked all the time is, if you're here, who's driving the ship? And the answer is the officer of the watch. We have a minimum of three very qualified and licensed officers manning the bridge at all times. Three different teams rotate every four hours on and eight hours off. The teams are made up of an officer of the watch, assistant officer of the watch, and a quartermaster or lookout. The terms steering, navigating, maneuvering, or just to keep it in layman's term, driving is used. There are several different methods that we use to quote unquote drive. The first and what everyone is interested in is always the ship's wheel or helm. Surprising to most, it's smaller than the wheel in your car. It doesn't have to be the gigantic wooden wheel with spokes or back in the day because today everything is electronically linked. It's still made out of wood though, at least on the edge. The wheel is usually used when we pick up the pilot until we're close to the pier and then again after we've left the pier until we drop the pilot off. A smaller version of the wheel is, you guessed it, called the mini wheel. It's the same idea as the helm, turn the wheel to port and the ship will go to the left. Turn the wheel to starboard and the ship will go to the right. The third method is the ECTUS, which is basically a digitized chart computer system which has replaced paper charts. There are no longer paper charts used for navigation on any of our celebrity ships. In the ECTUS system, we can plan a specific route, double check it and make sure that it doesn't pass over any land, and when we engage the system, the computer will keep us on the red dotted line or track plus or minus five meters at all times. Because it's so precise and the ship is constantly adjusting to stay on the track, it means that it's not the most fuel efficient option. For that reason, we tend to use the autopilot more often. The officer of the watch puts in the heading they want to steer and the ship will maintain that heading. But the wind and the currents could affect the actual course by pushing the ship further away from the track. So the officer of the watch must monitor it to ensure that we're still on the intended track that we want to be. Once we get to a port, that's when the real fun begins. Most people assume that the pilot does the docking and undocking of the ship. The pilot's role in navigation on board comes up frequently. We take pilots coming and going from the ports of call. When the ship is approaching a port, we open the same shell door on the side of the ship, usually around where the gangway is located, and we put out a ladder and the pilot climbs on. We bring them up to the bridge, give them a briefing on the status of the ship, and make them part of our team. They in turn provide us with information about the port, including weather, tides, currents, mooring arrangements, expected traffic, and any updates to navigation aids, for example, if they've moved a buoy. Once we're alongside, the pilot will disembark and then come back again just before departure. The pilot boat will follow the ship out and take the pilot off safely after we've left the pier and pass the sea buoy. When it comes to the actual maneuvers of the ship's docking and undocking, we split these maneuvers between our own bridge officers because it's kind of the most fun part of the job besides blowing the horn, obviously. I'll take 40 to 50% of the maneuvers and the remaining 50 to 60% I assign to everyone from the second in command, which is our staff captain, to the third officer, so that they have the experience of docking and undocking the ship. That way, by the time the most junior officer will reach the position as master, they have hundreds of maneuvers under their belts. When we approach the pier, the bridge officer who will perform the docking will take the con or the conduct from the pilot. Then we switch to maneuvering mode which gives us individualized control of the ship's propulsion, which in our case are the azipods, or azimuthing propellers. What that means is that they rotate a full 360 degrees, so we don't need stern thrusters. We have a lot of power at our disposal. The Celebrity Edge has a total of nearly 72,000 horsepower, and each of our four bow thrusters is around 4,800 horsepower. That's right, we go around beating our chest a lot. It also means that we don't need tugs to assist unless the weather is really not cooperating with excessive winds usually above 35 knots on the side of the ship. That's when we'll take a tugboat because it's affordable insurance. With all that power and the enormous responsibility, we have a little something special to assist the officer that you won't find on all ships, and that is Bug Naked, also known as the Maneuvering Support Animal. She has a keen sense and loves to stand beside whoever is doing the maneuver 
and I've had officers tell me that she absorbs the anxiety that comes with the pressure of performing for the first time. Now in some of the ports, we can't dock because maybe there isn't a pier. We have the option to drop the anchor or we can use the DP or dynamic position system. The DP uses GPS and a computer that synchronizes the propellers and thrusters to keep us exactly where we want to stay without having to put an anchor on the ocean bed. The system will fight against the elements to keep us in that exact location until we're ready to leave. We can maneuver using all methods from the center cockpit, but when we're close to the pier, we can transfer the controls to either the port or starboard bridge wings, since they have identical equipment and we can keep an eye on the side of the ship when we're coming alongside or departing the pier. One of the most satisfying aspects of maneuvering a ship like Celebrity Edge is being part of the junior officer's experience and success. We celebrate each of the firsts by giving them a memento to remember it by. Something along the lines of a key to the ship in the form of a keychain because there really isn't a key to start the ship or a license plate from the port of call that they've just done the maneuver because you should never forget your first. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we drive. Stay tuned for the next episode of How I See It, where we'll take a closer look at the Azipods. And until then, this is your captain, wishing you fair winds and following seas. <laughs>